Fleet Street, where all my ambitions as a reporter once lay, but now to belong to my memories. On doctor's advice, I had to leave it to make a new start in the bracing and fresher air of the Kent coast. I took one last look at the street, put all regrets from my mind, and set forth to a new life, still as a reporter, but to a world where the sea and not city smoke dominated. Ramsgate was my destination, and I had the choice of many trains, for Ramsgate, only 72 miles from London, is well served by four main London stations. Soon I found myself outside the Spick and Span station. I travelled by an early morning train to report to my editor on the East Kent Times, so few holiday makers were yet astir. The Inquiry Bureau, a smart modern office, was right opposite the station, the best vantage point for a stranger to Ramsgate. I asked the way to my new offices and was directed to the East Kent bus stop. The local bus services are very frequent and I was soon on board to be taken into the town of Ramsgate. My new offices were in a more friendly street than Fleet Street, and one day, my stories might be billed outside. The editor wasted no time. After a cheerful welcome, he sent me on my first assignment. Go and find out about Ramsgate for yourself, he said, and write the story. Well, I started at the Royal Harbour. The harbour is the heart of Ramsgate. From the sun deck on the East Pier, I watched the shipping. The lighthouse sends its rays out to those sailing near the Goodwin Sands, and I was able to look back at the town and see my new home spread before me. The duty officer regulated the constant flow of shipping. Craft of all types leave these stout sea walls, and the famous Ramsgate lifeboat was to be seen at exercise. Ramsgate looks after those who go down to the sea in ships as securely as it does its holiday makers, and already I had begun to feel that security too. There was an atmosphere of welcome, and the strain of city life had gone. I look forward to writing about Ramsgate more than any story I'd ever written before. From above the east pier of the harbour, I gaze back over the main beach, where in the distance stood the churches, hotels, boarding houses, restaurants, shops and theatres, and all that makes Ramsgate a focal point for discerning holidaymakers. I strolled along the eastern promenade, and there below me was the famous bathing pool of Ramsgate, the marina, glistening in the sun. Here surely was a good place to continue my story. Here I could interview both residents and visitors to Ramsgate. There was the high board, and the shallow end, especially for children, and people like myself. I made my way along the promenade, which was superbly laid out with well-tended plants, down the steps of the Winterstoke Chine. Here I asked my way to the marina entrance, and I was soon there, ready for another chapter of my story. I met two girls from Ramsgate's own Aqua Lovelies, and they agreed to show me round Ramsgate with their friends. With such attractive guides, my story looked like being a scoop already. Now down to the main beach. Sheltered by the cliffs, it's a sun trap facing south and a paradise for children with soft sand and where the family can relax together, enjoying health-giving rest.
Ramsgate provides telescopes for admiring the views. Dad's on holiday, all right. Home that evening through beautiful Ellington Park, a lovely retreat in the town, delightfully laid out. On the balcony of my room in my boarding house, my story began. But I had a special event to cover that evening, the Ramsgate Water Carnival. Ramsgate is a town of enterprise, and residents and holidaymakers alike join in the fun. The carnivals are expertly organized, and the many colorful floats included one with the aqua lovelies themselves. Water skiing is a feature of all the water carnivals. Although this girl was not so lucky, her recovery from sinking was first class. The thousands watching her gave her a great cheer. And so the carnival progressed from event to event as night fell over the town of Ramsgate. Then two water skiers with flaming torches circled the inner harbour at great speed thrilling the crowd with their skill as they interchanged, ducking under each other's ropes. Then the climax was reached with a magnificent display of fireworks, a regular attraction of the summer season. But Ramsgate features lighting, gaiety is personified in its streets and buildings. Even the harbour clock house forgets its sombre work of the daytime and puts on a gay front at night. Both young and old enjoy Ramsgate's lights. Next day, the Aqua Girls, now reinforced by two more, decided to show me a village. It was an unusual one, set in the heart of Ramsgate Town. If anyone ever uses the phrase, it's a small world to me again, I shall always remember Ramsgate's model village. make-believe to history. The girls took me to Cliff's End to see the Viking ship Hugin, which commemorates the landing there of Hengist and Horsa in AD 449. The stone tells of the visit to Ramsgate of Prince Jorg of Denmark in 1949 in connection with this replica of Hengist and Horsa's boat. Hengist eventually became the King of Kent. Hengist must have known a thing or two to select Ramsgate. At the moment I feel like the King of Kent. Westcliff Bandstand, I called in at the matinee in time to hear a song from Phil Kaufman, or Uncle Phil, as he's affectionately known. He told me how much he enjoyed working in Ramsgate in the good old style. Then down below the St. Lawrence Cliffs to talk to more holiday makers, young and old, on the wonderful bathing beach there. Ramsgate is a resort where the children bring their parents. Just one of the variety of sailing craft one sees in Ramsgate. And another. The pleasure steamer Queen of the Channel was now docked in Ramsgate. We had decided to take a trip to Calais on her on the following day, so I thought I'd take a look at her before returning to my digs. She's a beautiful craft and one of the many proud vessels of the General Steam Navigation Company.
Then I saw the anglers. Ramsgate is a great place for fishing. Here, on the East Pier, I found several devotees of the sport of King Neptune. There are angling contests held every year in Ramsgate with most attractive prizes. And here were practiced anglers. Just to oblige me, this boy wrested a fish from the ocean. The suspense was nerve-wracking. The air was fraught with fanatical excitement. Ah well, and so to bed. And to get to sleep, don't count sheep, count rams jumping over the gate. The next morning saw us boarding the Queen of the Channel for our no-passport trip to Calais. Ramsgate is only 29 miles from the French coast, and this ship runs regular trips across the Channel during the summer. Back at my boarding house, after seeing Calais, my story was growing fast. My kindly landlady, like all in Ramsgate, went out of her way to make me feel at home and to help me with my story. No need to type in your room, she had said. Use the parlour. I'd certainly found a home from home. It was she who suggested I visited the ice show at the Granville Theatre. It was a splendid idea, for Ramsgate specialises in first-class summer shows with up-to-date dance halls, old-time dancing and cinemas. So to the Granville Theatre on the following morning. I made my way round to the stage door to meet some of the brilliant artists of the record-breaking Carnival on Ice show. They were rehearsing for they had three changes of programme. Mr Lou Barber, the producer, was directing a new act. And two charming skaters, Stephanie Lloyd and Sally Ross, were rehearsing this routine on the stage. Every year this show continues to break the theatre record. It all looks so easy on the skates. Mr. Barber told me where I could find the comedienne, Lucille Gay. Ever tried to cross ice without skates? It was not a good start to my interview with the tallest girl in show business, but Lucille soon put me at ease. She gave me a good story too, for she's been a favourite at Ramsgate for three years now. Then Sally and Stephanie gave me their Ramsgate stories, but they both talked at once. Past the Albion Gardens on my way back to lunch, I stopped to admire the Madeira Walk waterfall, a delightful spot. The landscape garden work of this kind in Ramsgate is always perfect. I again met two of the Aqua Girls, who suggested we see Ramsgate from the air by taking a plane trip from Ramsgate Airport that afternoon.
that evening, the carnival procession through the streets took place. This is the climax of the Ramsgate holiday season, and the streets were thronged with people to watch this brilliantly organized event. I duly recorded my last event for my Ramsgate story. Tomorrow it would go to press, if, of course, the editor liked it. I made my way home through the lighted streets with my fingers well and truly crossed. Not long afterwards, we went on an East Kent road excursion. Their coaches are the last word in luxury, and they run many fine regular trips from Ramsgate to see the surrounding Kent countryside. We were off to Canterbury to see the famous cathedral. to Ramsgate again to the bus station near the Royal Pavilion where a grand surprise awaited me. My story had made front page news in the East Kent Times. I felt very proud. This spot by the Royal Victoria Pavilion, another popular centre of entertainment, I shall always remember with affection for it was here I first saw my story for Ramsgate in print. The Aqua Girls had been such wonderful guides in showing me Ramsgate but I was also grateful to my landlady who had been so generous in making me, a stranger, feel that I belong to Ramsgate. Why don't you see Ramsgate for yourself? Write for the brochure now. Here's the address. Publicity Officer, Information Bureau, Ramsgate. I'll repeat that. Publicity Officer, Information Bureau, Ramsgate.